Well, we're here at another coffee convo. Thanks for uh, joining us. Uh, my name is Steve. I'm with the Packer Group, and I am joined here by a professional in the mortgage industry. Mr. Uh, Grant, will you uh, say who you are and what you uh, do? Yeah, so uh, Grant Gerhard, I have a, a team, a mortgage team as well that, uh, you know, we service all residential mortgages. I've uh, been doing it for, oh my gosh, well, been in the industry for about 22 years, kind of started answering phones, processing, you know, and then worked my way up into, uh, you know, being a loan consultant. So yeah, we have uh, four other people on my team that kind of manage all the, the paperwork and the you know, the fun that we experience in, in the mortgage business of getting the, the deals all the way through to the closing table. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah. For those that don't know the industry at all, and they're looking at buying a house, what are some of the loans that they could potentially qualify for? I know we've got FHA, conventional. We throw around these terms, right? Yes. What, what do they mean to the, new, to the first time home buyer? Well, so there's literally four loan programs out there. You know, you have the conventional, you have FHA, you have VA, and then you have called the rural development. So obviously it's going to determine, the, the financial picture of a client will determine what one of those four they qualify for. All right, obviously if they weren't in the service, you know, you're not gonna be able to get a VA loan. Conventional is, you know, and again, in, in the real estate world is, you know, listed as the, the best right. loan out there. Um, but it may not be the best loan for, you know, a, a, a particular client. Yeah. Even if they can qualify for it. I think there's a misnomer out there that I have to have 20% down or I can't go conventional. Right. Talk to us a little bit about, about <laughs> what, you, what qualifies or what, what percent of down payment that you can have with a conventional loan. Because I hear all the time, well, Steve, I have to have 20% down. <laughs> Why don't you call your lender and find right. out? Right. Yeah. You've been talking to your parents, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's the normal one. Um, but yeah, so conventionally, uh, if you're a first time buyer, which consists of you have not been on title in uh, the last three years, oh. you can qualify for a 3% down conventional loan. So if I haven't been on title in three years, I can potentially be a first time home buyer again? Yes. Is what I just heard. That's yes. interesting. Okay. And only one, and if, like, you know, you're spouse was yeah. on there as well. Only one of the two of you has to be a first time buyer. So um, so she could have owned the house yeah. and you're the first time buyer and you know, yes, you would still get that three three percent down benefit. Okay. The government loan, so FHA is a government loan. Yes. Um, with that, is there there's assistance that the government may help out with sometimes Talk a little bit about that. What are those assistance programs or um, I guess amount limits that sometimes come along with that? Yep. So currently the only down payment assistance that is available is MISHTA. Now there could be some in pocket markets yep. um, that they have some specialty stuff, but for the like the blanket down payment assistance program right now is MISHTA. Um, MISHTA is basically another government entity. It's not the same as FHA, so it's a totally separate uh, totally separate entity and it's a max of $7,500 right now so that they can get loaned to them it's not right. a free it's not free money it's got to be paid back at the time of sale or a refinance if they were able you know if they were doing that but it's a help it's assistance towards their closing costs correct correct yep closing costs and or down payment yeah so uh, but yeah that's up to 7500 sometimes we see them we come out with like uh, I think it was uh, about a year and a half ago, they had a fifteen thousand uh, dollar grant available that was forgivable after five years. So sometimes I they'll throw, that boat. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they'll throw some other stuff out there, you know, like that. That will be, uh, you know, that'll be better than the current. But uh, for somebody to do that, a, you know, they got to take a Michigan Home Buyer class. You can do it in person or an online course. Um, it's not anything you know, crazy, but it's super educational and they'll talk about budgeting and stuff like that as well. Um, and then it's just lender parameters, you know, like they have to have a 640 credit score. You know, they're going to look at meeting income because you can't make over a certain amount right. depending on the number of dependents and whatnot in the household. So there's a lot of calculating to all of it, but, but yeah, it does help a lot of people. So again, walk me through a little bit or walk our audience through a little bit of 
um, percentages. Like what 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 qualifies you for certain percentages and how much do I have to put down? Like, can I use 3%? Can I use 5%? Can I use 20%? Got it. Yes, so <clears throat> so when you look at a down payment for a mortgage, there's gonna be three parts of it. Okay. So you're gonna have the down payment requirement of your program, which again, conventional, first time buyer, 3% down. FHA is a minimum of 3.5% down. Uh, VA is zero down. Uh, rural development is also zero down. And so there are some still some really great products out there that will you know, again, have a very low down payment. You don't need that 20% down conventional loan. Right. But when you look at the down payment, that percentage of that program is the one of the three. So then we have, you know, so we have the down payment of the program. We have a set of closing costs. They got to pay for the appraisal, the credit report, yep. the, all the, the third party companies to get the loan to the closing table. Yep. And then we have a year of property taxes and a year of insurance that we have to prepay up front. So that is the bulk of everything of for a total down payment. Correct. It's not just the 3% okay. or the 5% down okay. payment. Um, so so I have these three criterias that I have to meet for my down payment. Just an idea because, you know, I, I get out there, you know, well, Steve, you know, even at 3%, my, my closing costs are going to cost me $30,000. Is this true? <laughs> Walk us through a little bit. So, is it? Can you give an idea? I mean, obviously, there's not. I mean, until we run somebody, we get them under contract, and you're Correct. going getting to the table that you can narrow it down. But yeah. is there like an estimated, like a guesstimate out there that we could have? Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to give you know a, like a percentage for the everything. But when we look at it, uh, a, a good rule of thumb that I do, like again, say on a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar property. You know, you got the down payment of the program, uh, which is to say 3%, you're 7,500 bucks there. Yep. You know, you're running about $4,000 um, for the cost of obtaining the mortgage. So that pays for everything other than a home inspection. Yep. And then let's just say taxes are, you know, three grand and insurance is, you know, 1,500 bucks. So now we're adding another 4,500. So up to so, 15. 15,000. Yep, so you're around 15, 16K for the total all in down payment. As a real estate, estate agent, um, I field a lot of questions, right? And um, a lot of these questions are, are we gonna see a repeat of 2008? Um, or when, when it crashes, that's <laughs> when I'll, I'll go buy a house. <laughs> right. what, what would you suggest, <sighs> what would you tell a buyer that's coming to you with those questions. Yeah, I know what I tell them. That's a very, <laughs> that's a very uh, yeah, a topic that's coming across my desk quite a bit right now. And it's, um, you know, since the beginning of the new year, we've seen, you know, interest rates have been nothing but, you know, going on the uptick yeah. here. So based off of stats as we sit right now, now obviously anything could change, but with the inventory issue, I think it's still around somewhere between four to five million homes shy of the nation, you know, for, for people that are shopping right now. Yes. Uh, I don't think we're going to see any kind of a correction in the value. I think we're just gonna continue to see values increase um, based off of just that stat. Yeah. So, and now we have the, you know, the, the, the double whammy here of the interest rates increasing, so now, you know, we're gonna have higher interest rates and higher prices. So yeah, if I was a, a buyer or like I advise all my buyers, it's like time to get off the pot and get something ASAP before these rates just keep going up. I don't think there's any a ever a bad time to buy real estate. Um, you know, it's just a, a matter of like, most people say that, oh my gosh, it's gonna be correct or something's gonna happen. Yeah. Well, just like a stock, you know, you don't lose money unless you're forced to sell. So what always will happen is even if there was a dip, it's gonna be upswing. It's gonna come right back up, you know, the following years. And as long as you can stay there, make your payments, you know, you will, uh, you will succeed and you will make money on your real estate. You know, there's all different types of lenders out there. A lot of companies. Um, you know, we've got our big box and we've got our local and we've got, what sets you apart from the big box or the, the national, as they put it, the national companies? What sets you apart from that? Well, again, I think it's the, the relationship 
side of things, right? We don't do any advertising so that we can focus and hone all of our time in on our clients. So we're not answering the phones, you know, with mm -hmm. all the, the cold calls coming in. So, and then diving deep and then having that obviously and then hooking them up with the, you know, a preferred agent like yourself so that we have uh, the solid team of people, which is a key ingredient in getting offers accepted in today's environment. Yeah, I think one of the things that I, I find why I like, you know, you and um, over these big box um, is that you're available. Yeah, that too. Right, you're available. Um, you know, we put in a lot of offers on weekends. As we put those offers in, I always tell the other agent, hey, you know what, give my guy a call. He's, he'll take your phone call on the weekends. He'll, yeah. he'll tell you how qualified they are. And I think that's super important because yeah. you don't find that with the big box companies. No, yeah, they're the nine to five and you know, two what? or three days later, if you get a return phone call. Right, right. So where can people find you to kind of get market updates from you? Um, do you have a website? Do you have, are you on social media? Like where can people find you? Yep, so we're on social media. Um, Obviously, feel free to reach out to us. We can throw you on our, our, our pre-approval email campaigns or past client campaigns. Just kind of, uh, again, we don't do anything that's kind of outwardly advertising. We just normally just update all of our past clients yeah. and our, our pre-approved clients. But yeah, we're more than happy to add anybody to uh, add anybody to our video lists and campaigns if they want to keep updated. If you have any questions, if you feel overwhelmed with the market, with financing, with the pre-approval process, with the buying process, whatever that looks like. We, we, we ask that you would post it in um, under this link. You can put it to Grant Gearhart or to Steve Hull at, uh, on social media. Um, also, I would, I would just say, you know, if you wanna hear more about the market, um, the Packer Group just did a market analysis, um, their market update. You can find it on our Facebook page. So I, I kinda, Want you to go there, look at that. Um, goes over a lot of what we talked about um, today and where the market is and where, what's going on with it. Uh, so please feel free to ask any questions, post it in the comments. We'll get back with you, Grant or myself or somebody from our team. Um, but we will be on there monitoring it, looking at that. So please go on there and uh, hit us up on that if you have any questions. Well, Grant, I thank you for coming out and talking with us today and um, kind of filling our audience in with what is going on with the market and what yeah. that looks like. Anytime, guys. Anytime you want any kind of update, obviously feel free to contact us, like I said, in the feed or whatever. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll get back with you guys and we'll keep you as up to date as we are.